joining us for this wonderful workshop, preparing us for Shavuot and Revelation. So I want to just give you a couple of uh, things to know while we're going through our, our morning. So when I share the screen, I'll be sharing the chants, the lyrics. You can toggle between the screen share and the videos. There's a little double line if you put your cursor there. And you can move it to the left or to the right if you want the screen to be bigger or smaller. And when the screen isn't shared, if uh, Shefa is not highlighted, I probably will be highlighting you. Um, actually, Shefa, you can tell me if you prefer not to be spotlighted. 
And then people can just choose speaker view up in the right hand corner if they want to see you in a big screen. Yeah. And that way you get to see all of us. While yeah, you're yeah. Like yeah. Oh, that's great. I like to see you. <clears throat> so that's what we'll do. So if you want to see Rabbi Shefa in the big screen, just choose speaker view. And we are recording and we will be sending out the recording to everyone who registered. So Rabbi David? Rukhim Habayim, everybody. Welcome to this uh, really, really special event. It's just really an honor. Rachmiel, hi. It's great to see you there. Uh, it's such an honor to uh, to have Shefa back. The last time she was in Ashland, uh, she was with us in person, and this time uh, we're Zooming her in, Zooming to each other. Um, what Rabbi Shefa has done over the, uh, the many decades uh, that we've been colleagues and friends over 30 years is really, I don't want to say revolutionary, but really evolutionary part of what Reb Zalman Oliver Shalom called the, our deployments. And her deployment has clearly been to build a bridge, I, I would say, between um, um, between chanting and tefillah, between the long prayers and, 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 the, and the, the brief versions of those prayers, but also between East and West. And just as an anecdote, Rabbi Shefa, we had a, a bar mitzvah yesterday, and there was a family, uh, the man is from Nepal, and grew up in a religious Hindu family, and yes, at all our services, we do Shefa chanting, one of your chants or more, uh, or, or variations of those with different melodies. Uh, but uh, he came up to me afterwards and he said, I was so impressed because we do just this kind of chanting in Hinduism, as if this was a normal part of, of Judaism. And yeah. just, you just, you just well, do what chanting. works. You do what works. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, you know, in every, every prayer, uh, there's, there's DNA. There's a DNA to every prayer. And in every cell of that prayer is the totality of the prayer. So what Shefa has done by giving these words, you take the Moda'ani, just do Moda'ani, and you've got the DNA to the entire prayer. So it's a little chutzpah to thank you on behalf of the Jewish people, Shefa, but I'll do it. I thank you so much for what you brought to, to the world, for what you brought to the Jewish people in terms of tefillah, in terms of prayer. It's, it's accessible, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, you're beautiful, and it's an honor to have you here. Thank you so much. You know, the, um, often uh, like I have lots of different melodies for Moda, Moda Ani, and the melody that just came that I should do was a melody that I, that I composed on, on my way to the Grand Canyon. I was leading a pilgrimage to the Grand Canyon, which was called the Journey to Source, because the Native peoples think about, uh, about, about the Grand Canyon as their source place as kind of like the place of revelation. And they, uh, and so as I was uh, on my way on that pilgrimage, I chanted that melody. So every time I chant it, I feel like, oh, we're on our way, we're on a journey. And I think this is, um, this idea of journeying is so kind of central to Judaism. We are on this journey. And it's so important to know that you're on the journey and also that you're already there. So that's, those are the, that's the paradox that we hold, and that's really what, what we're gonna be working with today. Um, so I just wanna ask everybody, if, you, if, you, if, if, you, if it's possible to show your face to, so that we could just, just greet everybody here and connect energetically. I guess you can connect with a name too. But if it's possible to show oh, your face, yay. then we can um, just connect connect up with these faces. Mm. There was a there was a couple people who were here with uh, just a, a few minutes ago. I was on the, the the Jewish psychedelic summit, and a couple of you were there for the prayer that I offered. So this is a, a continuation mm -hmm. of of that. And uh, oh. Rabbi Shefa, a couple people put in the chat that they can't turn on their video because of low connectivity. Okay. Oh, yeah. they're thanks, very present. They want us to know that. Yes, yes. Thank you. And then we'll we'll connect with their picture and their name. But I just <coughs> always feel like when I'm on a journey, I want to see who are the journeyers that we can connect with together. So, um, yay. So, the, the, you know, so I'm thinking about this journey that that you know that we're on, we're on and the journey when i think about this journey and um there's a strange thing about time being you know time and space being uh 
completely flexible, you know, that there's, that the time and space is not just a linear thing. And the way that I know that is through what I think of as mythic moments. And um, I want to talk about three mythic moments in Judaism. And a mythic moment is a moment that you think of maybe happened at some other time, but is actually happening right now. It's a moment that kind of defines us. And the three mythic moments of our Jewish practice are creation, liberation, and revelation. And those, those three mythic moments, our Jewish life depends on being able to tune in to that, to those mythic moments that are happening right now, if we are attuned to them. And um, Shabbat is really, um, I think, so much about uh, that moment of creation. But actually, every, every day, there is the sense of recreation. There's a sense that God is making all of this happen just now. And if I am awake, I am encountering it as, as new, as something that is emerging out of the, 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 inf the, out of the infinite. Here is the form that this creation is taking. And so I want to be awake to create, to, to the, not only, you know, what's, what's, what's been created, but a sense that I am co-creating with the divine, this world, in this moment. And to me, that's, you know, that's what makes it a, a spiritual life, is that sense of the surprise, the creativity, the, and, and as, on, on Shabbat, uh, when, we, when we sing the Kiddush, we call up that mythic moment of creation, and it's a signal that we can actually relax because the, you know, and, and enjoy what has been created, because we've been kind of pushing all week to like make stuff happen, and then we lean back into that mythic moment of creation, and it is, um, it is there for us. So that, that, that's the first mythic moment. And then the second mythic, mythic moment of Judaism is the moment of liberation, which we call Letziat Mitzrayim, which I think most literally means coming out of narrowness and um, into expansion. That we, you know, that is the process that we are engaged in. We are always coming out of something that is narrow into something that is, uh, that is more expansive, unless, unless we're not, then we're back in Mitzrayim. <laughs> and, uh, and, our, and our Jewish lives is meant to tune us into this possibility. It is possible to leave Mitzrayim at any moment because that mythic moment is there for us, that we attune ourselves to it. And in you know, and, and Shabbat uh, also is a sign of let's see, Mitzrayim, a remembrance of that moment. But that moment is 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 kind of woven into our liturgy. It is something that we want to, you know. Zecher Litziat Mitzrayim. We want to remember the going out, and if we for, if we forget it, we sometimes end up in in narrow places. But to say that we're going out means like we always have access to the, that passageway out of whatever narrow place we find ourselves in. And the fun thing is, once you think you've come out of the narrow place. At some point, you notice you're in a new narrow place. <laughs> that, that that there are, and and which means that there is conditioning that you, that you didn't even know you were carrying, or there is a weight inside you that you didn't even know was there because you thought that was just normal. And um, so that 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 mythic moment of let's see at Mitzrayim is is just kind of shapes our journey, uh, defines our journey. And, uh, and then the third mythic moment is, is the moment that is called revelation, which is sometimes called standing at Sinai. 
And w when we, you know, the standing at Sinai is um, a place, a state of being, a possibility. And the possibility is the possibility that, that God is pouring herself out to us in this very moment. I came across this, um, this poem that's called Torah Unfolding by Ariel Neshama Lee. She says, let me just close that down. Holy One, you extend your hand and out drops a flower bud, the petals open to reveal your Torah unfolding. I'll just say that again. Holy One, you extend your hand and out drops a flower bud, the petals open to reveal your Torah unfolding. So there's a there's a process happening. Torah is 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 dropping. It is unfolding. It is revealing itself to us. And so the word Torah, you know, is um, it's kind of a, a a a word that means not just what's written down in the book, but what is being revealed right now through this moment. So my my intention as we uh, as we step onto this journey of opening to revelation is to really kind of ask the question: How can I live in this mythic moment? How can I have it available to me always? And maybe even what cuts me off from it? That's the always the inquiry for me is like, oh, if that mythic moment is available always, how come I'm not living there always? And then I need to address address that question so I, I you know so the way that I approach like a spiritual challenge of an inquiry is to take sacred phrases and bring them to life and see their their power and see if they can help me to um, to kind of move into that mythic space so um, so I'm going to say, are you ready to take this journey, everybody? Ready? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I knew that was the answer. You knew that was the answer. Uh, and um, and are there are there any if there are there any questions before we start <coughs> out that we before we embark on this journey? Are there any, anything that's stirring stirring in you and you and you can actually unmute to. Ask a question if you if something occurs to you in this moment as we as we begin. Let's go. All right, we're going. I'm so happy to see you and Rachmiel in the same screen. Yeah. You know, for so many years you didn't you weren't able to travel together, and I'm just like so I'm like. Over the moon to just see you two in one screen. We live in, the squ we live in this, squ this square. Here. It has been <laughs> one, of the greatest, one of the greatest blessings of Zoom is to be able to do to work together again to do this holy work. So, so um, Ayala, would you share the first the first practice? And oh, Marlis, wait a minute, Marlis wanted to say something. Yeah, I just I'm curious when you are seeking you talk about what is it that blocks you from the mythic moment and so when you're seeking the phrase that will help you do you i mean is it pro prescriptive or is it the same every time and i, I know the answer to that question is yes <laughs> <laughs> both I think it's and a, I think so it's a, I, a different journey yeah, I yeah. just wonder if you know as you start this journey have you there must be some intention in what you've chosen um, as what comes first or next or is my could my question shift 
what the first chant would be. Ooh. Ooh. You know, it's like, I, I kind of feel like I could start anywhere. <laughs> you know, when I, when I wrote them down, it was like, okay, this is the order. But then, you know, I, could, I think I could have written something. We could have started someplace else. And the reason I wanted to start with this, with this chance, and you can show it, show it again, Ayala, I'll tell you why, is because it starts with this uh, word... Um, that's uh, that's the shema that that has in it the shema, so the shema I think of as you know is often just thought of as like the, our central prayer in Judaism, our central prayer begins with a um, an instruction to to listen, and um, and and when we do, we we that that oneness will be revealed shema Yisrael. Uh, if you listen, oh you God wrestlers, you will you will uh, then be able to have that revelation, which is what Sinai is, is that revelation of oneness. And uh, along the way, um, we have to learn how to listen. And uh, Isaiah gives us a, a, you know a further, kind of exploration of listening and he take he takes that word sh, uh, shema and he turns it into there's a certain kind of um, grammatical form that then when you want to say listen but then you really want to say really listen really listen no don't just listen because I, I remember my mother just saying to me you're not listening and uh, <laughs> and and if she had knew, known how to say, really listen, there's a word for it in Hebrew, really listen. So this, Shimu Shamoa Eli, so God is speaking to us and saying, you, you think you're listening, but no, 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 no. I want you to really listen. And, uh, and then there's a, there's a kind of a, a what happens. And, and it's almost like you, you can notice if you are listening, then this is what happens. You will eat what is good and your souls will delight in richness. Like that's what happens when we are listening. And so when we say this to the whole world, we know that you know, the whole world is not listening so well when we are consuming the wrong things in the wrong amounts. And I'm not just talking about food, although food is part of it that whatever we take in is determined by the quality of our listening. And that, because that will bring us a wisdom, a discernment. And then what we take in is actually going to benefit us and move us along the path. And in the next line it says, and your souls will delight in richness. It, you will always be satisfied. And it's funny, Somehow the 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 bet the, the bet at the end of Tov always falls off, and there must be a midrash or something. Why <laughs> that, that happens? But shimusha moa elai So I I um I wanted to start with this chant because it's just so central to a to a Jewish spiritual path. It's a path of listening, of really listening, and then. The noticing that when you listen, everything changes. You are then in the, you are in the world. You are in the, oh, look at that. You are in the world and, uh, and you are faced with every spiritual challenge. But if you maintain that sense of listening, then you will be in harmony with this world. You will, you will, and I think I see David's already chanting, chanting it. <laughs> so what I like to do with it, with a chant like this, is put these words inside me as a remembrance, so that it will, it will be there. It will inspire me in my listening, and uh, and I can start to 
um, kind of enter into the mystery of what is this listening, which is part of what revelation means. So let's let's try this practice. <coughs> this practice. And there's two parts to the practice that we'll get to do, and you can choose what you want. And but just the idea is like to hear God saying this to you, you know, calling you onto the path of revelation.
bring your attention to the breath and breathe into the heart. Find inside that heart deep listening. We're anchored when we're anchored in that deep listening heart. We look out from there and imagine the great feast of life. All of the experiences, relationships, richness, and from this deep listening heart we are wise beyond measure, we are open to exactly what is good exactly what will move us on our path. And the path is to Sinai, and the path is also to the Promised Land, where there is a flow, a continuous flow, of milk and honey of nurturance, of exactly what we need, with exactly the right sweetness to it. So when we uh, open your eyes, what you will find uh, in front of you on the Zoom screen is the mm -hmm. This these listening friends. These listening friends. And if Ayala, if you want to just show us this next slide, these listening friends. <coughs> and what I what I notice is that to maintain a, a spiritual practice, I need this I need these friends. I, uh, I can't be on this path alone because I have some blind spots. And when I'm with you, I get to be reminded of those blind spots. And also when I'm with you, I get a reflection back of maybe something you see in me that I don't see in myself and that can move me towards that promised land. So. So I wanted to um, to to chant these words, and in Hebrew, what they mean is is these listening friends. Um, that um, that all our friends listen for your voice. We come together to listen together. It's very different than just listening alone. Mm -hmm. And your listening magnifies the sound for me. And my listening does that for you. And it has to do with the quality of presence that you bring. And um, when, when you're with someone who is Shimusha Moa really listening, it wakes up that quality inside you. And um, this world can be so noisy <laughs> <laughs> that being able to really listen um, takes this kind of friendship, which I am so grateful for. And, and what I'm listening to, I'm listening for your voice. I'm not listening to anything. I'm listening for your voice. And your voice comes to me as this world. Really, it's you know it's it's a uh, it's but but it 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 has to do with my attention to it and my expectancy. So I say to this world um, that God is speaking through this world, and I say, "Let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice." It's like clear away some of the static 
and let me really hear your voice. And, um, and I love that it comes in the context of spiritual friendship. And um, looking around the Zoom room, I'm so grateful for the spiritual friends that I see here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, that, that we, you know, we need each other, uh, we support each other, um, and, uh, and, we, you know, and that, that friendship is really what supports the journey and supports the listening. Um, and so, and the text goes, you know, goes on to say, "Oh, woman in the garden," and the a woman in the garden is Shekhinah, the the divine, imminent presence that is always whispering, that is always speaking. If only we uh, we can show up and and hear it, a woman in the garden. And as I was composing this chant. I said, Gar-, and I said inside me, garden? What garden? And then I heard a voice that said, this garden of love. Mm-hmm. And then, just for a moment, the veils of my eyes, you know, kind of lifted, and I could see, oh, that's what this is. This is a garden of love. But I don't always see it. I rarely see it. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while, I do Once see in a while, it. I do see it. <laughs> oh, this garden of love. <coughs> Let me hear your voice. So, I, I want to chant this as a, as a way as inspiring us on our journey to revelation, inspiring us to connect to the listening friends, and um, to remember that that voice is always speaking to us, but we have to get quiet enough inside to be able to, to hear it still enough for it to touch us. Hush me, hush me, 
just to go inside and listen with an awareness that you are supported, you are sent. These listening friends are holding you, sending you. So in my meditation practice, I imagined there's a, a kind of what, you know, I, I think of as a cocking my head inward, you know, somehow I have this image of like, maybe it was the RCA dog, the, the, dog, the dog when I, when I, when I was a child, gramophone thing. and, uh, yeah. But there's a there's this way that that the head kind of mo moves in a certain way that I'm listening, but it's listening inside. And when that listening happens, it doesn't matter if I hear anything. The act of listening, of keep of, of sort of the, the the depth of that listening, is what changes my state and allows me to come become receptive to to the flow of revelation to that divine flow that is always flowing so um, so I want to find myself every day in the garden of, of love and uh, and I want to notice what you know that sometimes I get distracted and sometimes there are illusions of separation but really, that's what they are. They are illusions. And, and if I am really listening, mm -hmm. really right. having part of my consciousness turned inward <coughs> to the vast expanse within, then it's going to change what I see out here as well. I'll have more access to that garden if I am connected on the, on the inside. So it's amazing that I'm hearing I'm hearing you chanting with me, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> yeah. um, and um, if for the next practice that I want to do on our journey, um, I'm going to ask if you'll find a a pen and uh, paper, and where we're going to do a little bit of kind of of automatic writing as part of the practice. <laughs> Another pen for me. Is that pen? Yes. Okay. I think so. so, you know, I I I find these amazing <coughs> treasures in our scripture and, and liturgy that open up passageways for me and um, this one that I found from in Psalm 91 and I think Psalm 91 is uh, is is kind of dedicated to Moses it's or it is Moses it, it embodies it embodies him or something but he's it's connected with him but it has, it has this line in it um, that says uh, Yoshev Beseter Elion. And uh, it's a, 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 Esther says it's written by Moses. It's a tribute to <laughs> Moses, yes. Who knows? Um, so Yoshev Beseter Elion. And so when I think of this, when I see this, uh, this, phrase, this part of the phrase, uh, which I translated, whoever, whoever sits in the secret of the highest, it's a description of my practice. It's like, I'm going to go in my meditation, in my prayer, in my practice, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit in the secret of the highest. Meaning, like, I'm going to, I'm going to touch it. I'm going to let it touch me, that, that secret of the highest, that place that is, you know, 
beyond discursive mind. I'm going to sit there. Whoever sits in the secret of the highest, uh, there, uh, the, 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 the psalm tells us that there is a long-term benefit to do that when you, when you do that. When you do that every day, maybe more than one time a day, when you sit in that secret of the highest, something happens to you and you begin to um, have access to this place, which is called Betzel Shaddai. Um, Betzel Shaddai Yitlonan. You will abide. You will be able to live and call it your uh, abode. You'll be able to to find that place, which is Betzel, uh, Betzel Shaddai. So the, the mystery of Betzel Shaddai is this. Uh, it's, it means the, the shade of, of this <coughs> name of God, Shaddai. And, uh, and I'll just say that Shaddai is an ancient, a very a- ancient name for God that is often translated as almighty or kind of mountain god and uh, and it has in its root this shadayim which is the the breasts and the breast is the, the god of the breast sort of is that the aspect of of the deity that that n- nurtures us that protects us that um that the, the closeness of that uh, aspect of god uh, gives us a sense of ultimate safety mm-hmm. that we can rest into. It's like a taste of the promised land, but sail shall die. And the sail, you know, as a desert as a desert people, when you when you came to some shade, it was like a machaya. Mm-hmm. Shade was like life giving something. You know, you guys in Oregon, I'm not sure if you have the <laughs> same relationship with shade. You know, you know, but uh, but then you know when the sun is beating down, beating down, beating down in an oppressive kind of way, you step into the shade and you say, oh, "It's like you are, you know, you're cold off. You you can relax. You don't have to fight. You don't have to struggle." So, but sail shall die. So, um, so this is the fruit of practice. The fruit of practice is being able to say, oh, well, that's where I live. I live there. And, uh, and it happens because we visit, every, we, we visit every day in our practice. Um, um, Sue, Sue, um, Sue says in the, in the shadow piece of our relationship with God, yeah, I'm not, you know, it's like I'm staying away from the shadow stuff right now because I th- really think it has this different meaning. But, um, but it is life-giving. And so what I'd like to do is to chant these words and have each of us go and visit the place to be able to notice. Um, it's a place inside us where we can go that, um, that has uh, this, this quality to it. And um, and so what I like to do with this practice is uh, is to do a little bit of writing when I get there. So I chant the chant. I have that little taste of the of the secret of the highest. I have the promise of uh, Matzel Shaddai um, that is that that is actually my home. And in the, in the silence after the chant, I walk through the door and I step into the shadow, that shade of, of Shaddai. And I breathe it in, I notice it, and uh, take it in and savor it. And then without leaving that place, I just put my pen to the paper, paper and begin to just write some words of what, it, of what it feels like to be there. So that's the, that's the practice we'll do. And at the, and the end of that, we will go and um, into breakout groups to be able to share with each other a little bit about what we experienced in the in the Tzel Shaddai place. And there's 26 uh, squares here, so 
um, so in groups of, of, of three, three, how many would that, would that work, Ayala? Three times, um, there'll be three or four people yeah, three together, or four. three or four people <coughs> will, will come. So that's a, that's a thing. So, um, so let's do the chant and just take a look at those words, Yoshev. It's almost like when I'm saying that I'm making a commitment to my practice. You, you know, it's like, oh, there is a little, little twinkle there, a little sparkle of, of the this, of this secret place that I can go to. And then the promise comes to me that when I do that every day, um, it's like that, sh that, that place is going to be accessible to me. And then I can go there. And with uh, my awareness, I anchor that into me so that I can go there anywhere, anytime I want. You shall The 
to the breath, breathe into the heart, and notice a, do a door opening in the heart, walking through the door of your practice, into that place that is the shade of Shaddai, and as you breathe into it, look around with the eyes of the heart to see what does it look like, what does it feel like, what are the feelings in your body, in your breath, what are the messages that come from that place. You just rest there for a moment and when you're ready just to open your eyes just enough to See what you're writing and write down from that place a description of where you of where you are and what it gives you. So we're going to um, go to our break L. Oh, okay. So I can make breakout groups. And, uh, and then I'm, you're going to have like 
10 minutes or so, 10 to 12 minutes to, to share something about where you've been and also maybe something about your, about your, own, your own practice. Send you there. And we will pause. Harvesting of maybe some of the things that we found in that place of uh, Tzel Shaddai, because I always feel like um, there's a there's a way that when I'm chanting, I am inducing a kind of a waking dream, and then um, especially if there's visual things that come to me, then that often that dream has some meaning that I need to to unpack, and I'll just share that. Uh, in my Tzel Shaddai place, I was, I was, uh, I was leaning on, I was sitting on soft grass, leaning against a redwood tree that was covered mm. with moss, and uh, looking up into the canopy. And um, I told Ayala, I said, "Look, oh, there are monkeys up there. <laughs> there are monkeys playing in the canopy." And I thought the message that those monkeys had for me had to do with play, with play. That, uh, that that's part of this place of, of, of relaxation. Um, um, that, you know, they say that the opposite of work is, some people say it's rest, but I say it's play. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's really important <laughs> that not, to, you know, that it's a, a place of rest, but it's also a, play, a place where the, the, the playful emerges and in that playful is my my creativity, my joy, my you know my connection really happens mm, yeah. through that playfulness. So I think that was a message from my psyche to someone who tends to get very serious sometimes. Uh, I was wondering if anybody wanted to unmute to you say there were there any anything surprising in your the feeling or the image uh, that you. That you found. So that's David. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. So um, so in the automatic writing afterwards, I was, you know, writing down some things and about what it felt like for me to be in the shade, etc. And I and I was writing down and I came to the end and I started just to write, there is a time to plant, a time to harvest, a time to learn, a time to teach, etc. And that was just part of what I was writing. And one of one of my spirit buddies in the breakout room said, you know, David, that's from Ecclesiastes, which go help, which we read as a pairing for Shavuot. And that just and that was my psyche speaking to me. Right. Ecclesiastes is like one of my like my all time like favorite. Like you have Sherry Sharim for me, it's Ecclesiastes. So anyways, 
yeah. that was totally surprising and just like the universe speaking to me just you know yeah. so, mm. hey, thank actually, you that. actually it's a text that associated with sukkot and um but uh you know the same same guy got it got <laughs> it got it thank you yes thank you yes yes but there's definitely a rev revelation in the in the ecclesiastes that we want to open to and so you're opening to like what this moment holds the, the, the right the message that was there indeed any other other surprises things that you want to share i'm looking around looking around the room i found that in the shade of the highest was the deepest valley Mm -hmm. And that deep valley is where things can grow and be juicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, oh. I, um, I, went, I, I led a pilgrimage to Machu Picchu and the Sacred Valley of, in Peru. And uh, I asked people who lived there, I said, well, what makes this valley sacred? And they looked at me like I was crazy, <laughs> like the, I didn't know. He said, she, they said, well, that's where things grow. <laughs> that's what makes it sacred, is that, that, is that, is that things grow in, the val in, the val in those valleys. And it was a whole different way of thinking about ar uh, agriculture as something mm -hmm. sacred. It's been like the Pachamama, the, the great mother, was feeding us from those places of the valley because in those valleys is what, you know, you know mm -hmm. we, we are fed. And I think in the Tzel Shaddai also, we mm, are, we like, are fat, yeah. we are mm -hmm. fat. And with exactly um, what is good to delight our souls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so any, 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 anywhere, anywhere else? So, you know, I, I, I just want to, just to, to step back again to, to say, you know, and there's a couple people who came late and I want to say, say that we're talking about these these three mythic moments which we want our Jewish path to give us access to in every moment that those moments are happening now which is the moment of creation the moment of liberation and the moment of revelation and uh, and we want to be able to to say like oh I live I, I live there and if I don't, I know my way back. And that's why I put in the, in the broadcast, I said, you know, what is the practice that brings you there? Because I think that's really important to note. So um, Shavuot has, an, has, has that we're preparing for, we're, we're journeying to this place. And it has this, um, this other set of, of uh, images associated with it that has to do with uh, the, a sacred marriage. And the sacred marriage is between us and 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 the divine, us and the mystery. There is a sacred marriage, and Torah is our ketubah. Torah mm. is the ketubah. So we want uh, and that that our Torah to reflect what we need to know as we step into that sacred marriage. We're making a a commitment on Shavuot and the journey there is really a journey towards being able to make that commitment being able to stand under the chuppah and really um, be wholehearted really um, and so um, when I've led um, Shavuot retreats and rituals uh, uh, with um, my Kolzimra people, we, we do this amazing ritual that lasts all night long, um, is, that we, is that each person spends the day finding their Torah, meaning one pasuk, one sacred phrase that's going to be their Torah that year. <laughs> and, uh, and we set up a chuppah, and that person chooses four witnesses to hold their chuppah, and they stand under the chuppah, holding the Torah, and we all, we chant them up with that phrase. We chant them up until it gets inside them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's a very powerful 
it's very powerful ritual to be chanted up in that way. And when you're when you're feeling the weight of the Torah as you hold, and you're standing under the chuppah, it means you are making um, a commitment, and it's going to change really the path moving forward. And um, I I wanted to do this um, this chant from the Song of Songs um, that says, uh, "This is my beloved, and this is my friend." Because I think this word, that word, the word this, ze, is maybe, you know, one of the holiest words, ze or zot, this. Um, because this world uh, is the disguise that God makes, that, that wears, you know. God is wearing this disguise, in, uh, and it's disguised as this moment. And it is my job to un to undress <laughs> the, uh, this moment um, and, uh, and to fall in love. Um, so being in love doesn't mean that I like everything, but being in love is a state uh, of, of deep, deep knowing, knowing that we are connect, that we are actually connected, we are actually one. Uh, so when I say Zadodi, this is my beloved, I'm saying this moment as I stand here at Sinai under the chupa, uh, this moment um, is my beloved. And I make a commitment to presence, really. I, com I, com I commit to showing up for this moment, this my beloved. And, uh, and then it says, Vizere'i. And Vizere'i means, you know, and this is my friend, which means that I need to do something to befriend this moment. You know, I am in, often in an argument with the moment. Um, there's something I don't like about it. Uh, Rachmel and I started to do this practice that was given to us by, from Ek uh, some, uh, it's a tape of Ev Ek Eckhart Tolle. And referencing she, a Zen master. Yeah. And he, he says, every moment what you need to say is, Thank, thank you for everything. everything. I have no complaints whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> now try that on. That's a rigorous practice. Thank you for everything. everything. I, have I have no, no complaints, complaints whatsoever. whatsoever. <laughs> so, so we've been doing that, you know, we've been doing that practice, and then we, we pretty much laugh when we do, when we, yeah. when we do it. <laughs> um, but... The idea is that, that to come out of contention with mm -hmm. this moment. Um, it's like there may be things about this moment I want to, you know, fix or change or tweak or add or whatever it is, but it's different than being in a place of complaint. Mm -hmm. It's just the qu that that quality that if something needs to be done, I'll do it. If there's something that's wrong, I might need to fix it, but I don't have to complain about it. Yeah, that's, and. Um, yeah. You, you're saying you're saying that roads countered that yes countered to your stereotypes yes yes we like to do that <laughs> um, and I just want to say I had this one uh, directee of my <clears throat> spiritual direction practice uh, who was going about to put up a mezuzah uh, and uh, at her new place and I said to her well what do you want to write in your mezuzah and um, you know. Remember. What do you want to remember every time you walk through that door? You know, there's a traditional thing that we that we write in the Mezuzot, and I said to her, "Well, this is this is Jewish renewal. <laughs> <laughs> we could write whatever we, we want in the Mezuzah. You know, it it could be. You know, what do you really want to remember as you walk mm -hmm. through that door?" And she thought about it just for like a split second, and she said, "Fall in love." And I just thought it was an amazing thing to, to be able to, to, to say, oh, what I want to do as I walk in this door or walk out of this door, I want to fall in love. Mm -hmm. And that's what she wrote in her, in her mezuzah. Um, but I want uh, to, to, um, for us to um, open up to Za. And I like to also tell this story about when I was um, when I was 
going to go to rabbinical school, to the Reconstructionist Rabbinical School. I knew that I was called to spiritual leadership. That was the place that I wanted to go. And uh, I had to go to an interview. And Art Green was the, was the president of the college at that time. And, um, you know, and I sort of like, I, I did a, like, a, like a quick, like a reading of all the Mordechai Kaplan books I could read, like just crammed it, you know. And, uh, and I walked into this interview and there was this, you know, set at this like big board table with these people grilling me, you know. And uh, Art Green asked this question. He said, how do we know that you're not going to go through rabbinical school and then start your own religion? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, what, and I said, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. So, so I, um, that's okay. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. So what? I, so on the outside, what I what I was like, uh, I, I was pr I was indignant, and I sort of spouted some Mordechai Kaplan. Uh, kind of thing about the evolve, evolving civilization, and I was part of the process of that evolution. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah. so outwardly, I was giving this answer, and inwardly, I was saying, "Hmm, hmm, what would what would my religion? What would it be? You know, what would it be if I started my own religion? What?" And I came up with this idea that I was going to was called the religion of um, Zeh. Zeh. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to be able to see uh, to see God and know God in 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 in, 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 in this in this. So, so as we prepare uh, for this uh, to be able to have access to this mythic moment of revelation, we're gonna like put down some of our arguments with this and open in love and in friendship with the world as it is in this moment.
my ketubah, my marriage contract, the contract that I, that helped me to stay in connection. So sometimes to understand that mythic moment of revelation, we need to go to the to the scroll that is assigned to that moment of, 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 of Shavuot, of giving of Torah. And the scroll that is, that is assigned to it is the Book of Ruth. And when, you know, uh, what, you know what um, <coughs> Reb David was saying about being, you know, me being a chanter, honing in on what is the essence, what is the ikar, what is the, you know, when I'm looking at a text, I'm always looking for what is that secret phrase that's going to <coughs> unlock the power of the whole text? And in the book of Ruth, there is a moment uh, where Ruth says to Naomi, "Amech ami velohai elo elo elohai." Your people are my people, and your God is my God. So, it is a moment of belonging. It is a moment. Uh, when uh, when is of of a kind of a, a vow that says, you know, I'm yours, you are mine. And uh, Ruth is famous for one very important thing. She is the progenitor, the mother of the Messiah. So when we think of the Messiah not as a person but as a consciousness, then you might say that this moment of Torah is the birthplace of messianic consciousness, that it is born in this moment, in this, uh, in, in this expression of belonging. And uh, so when I've used it as a practice, um, what I do is I, I feel that sense of belonging First, to my own little circle of beloveds. As my heart opens, my, that circle gets wider and wider. And as my heart opens, it, it, it begins to encompass much, uh, a much bigger kind of field. And even the people I don't agree with are part of that place of belonging. We belong to each other. You are also my people, even though you voted for the other guy. You're also my people. I mean, that's when I'm in this very soft, open-hearted place. I can look and say, you're my people too. And um, as I chant it my, and my heart opens, I keep expanding that and to include the, the the four-legged ones, and the trees, and the plants, and the winged ones, and uh, and the you know, and uh, and the cloud people, and the star people, you're my people too. We're, you know, at the end of the chant, if I chant it long enough, I belong to the cosmos, and that is Mashiach consciousness, that sense that we belong to one another. No matter no matter what, you know we're 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 living out the 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 drama of separation, but the Mashiach consciousness is the realization that we belong. So I want to chant uh, do this practice with you, 
and see if we can find our way to that that place of belonging. And um, you learn the chant, and then as you chant <coughs> it, imagine chanting it first to the small circle of beloveds, and then with every repetition of the chant, just expand that circle to include everyone. mythic moment of revelation. Imagine that we are stepping into Mashiach consciousness, that realization that we belong to each other, that we belong to the cosmos. We are all of one piece. We're all together, inextricably bound to one another.
as we stand at Sinai, each of us hears something different because each of us has a different role to play in that dance of unity, of coming into unity. So, when you're ready, you can open your eyes and just, just to check in to say, how does that, how does that feel? What did you notice? Is there anything like the idea of having a, a practice is sort of to taste certain states of consciousness so that they um, they feel familiar they feel like like oh yeah coming home coming home to this truth really. and uh, and um, the, you know we're we're coming towards the end of our practice together and maybe I'm just going to do this one more practice um, but before I do, I'll just to see if there's any questions that arise in you about this this mythic moment where we're we're headed, and you know it's like this journey of preparation is really coming into wholeness and openness, um, coming into a place of not knowing of kind of a kind of emptiness so that we can be filled and if we l live with that kind of emptiness then God is filling us all the time and instead of getting filled we become channels it just moves right through and um, caresses us along along the way so I think that's part of it so um, open to to questions but I uh, want to do this one more, one last practice <coughs> and the last practice is as is, is uh, from the Song of Songs and says uh, which is which is you know on the on, on his wedding day libo on the day of his heart's rejoicing. Um, and as I was chanting these words and creating the practice, what, I, what, what bubbled up inside me was, oh, that's today. That's today. It's today. You know, it's like, and that's how I want to see Revelation, really, as being like, um, it's available to me today if I come to Sinai. I come in this place of, of openness. And so what this marriage marriage is, is, is the marriage of duality. It's like when, um, when that which seems like the, it is opposite come together and form um, a kind of a, of, of, of a continuum, a unity, a dance, this oneness, um, then you know there's uh, there um, there is a sense you know, that God's presence is with us all the time, and uh, and we can open to that. It's not separate from us. It is you know it is it is woven into the fabric of our being. Um, and so uh, the the chant for me is a is a celebration of a truth that I sometimes get a peek at, but I don't necessarily live there, but I know it, but knowing it's there gives me a kind of a compass, a sense of direction that, um, that, that, um, that it's possible and it's not something that just my ancestors knew or just my descendants will know. It is today, mm, it yeah. is right now. It is right now. Hi yom, hi yom, hi yom. So I thought we would, we would end with this practice, and um, and have a celebration. You know, um, it's interesting this idea of the wedding day. Uh, when uh, when 
Jalaluddin Rumi died, they called that day his wedding day. Hmm. And it's just, I see it differently, you know. It's like, imagine thinking about the day of, of mm, yeah. your death as a day of mm. celebration, um, that you are reunited fully with the beloved on, mm. that, on that day. And instead of holding a fear of that day, we have a kind of a joyful anticipation mm. of it. That would change everything, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? That's sure. That would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's do this as our last practice. today. That was juicy and yummy. I need to get back to the psychedelic summit. <laughs> Rabbi Sheffer, thank you so much. It was just inspiring and beautiful. And just, and I'll, just... I'll be thinking about you on Shavuot. You know. Good. Yeah, please, uh, everybody, join us. With our, uh, we're doing it again with Panei of Portland, Rabbi Hanna. And I will be uh, kind of facilitating this. So, so we invite you to join us. And uh, Shefa, thank you so much for your, for your gifts. And Rachmiel, I can't wait to see you in person. I miss you so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. likewise. Yeah, oh, my I'd, love to come, I'd love to, yeah. to come there, too. Mm. Thank okay. you so much. And thanks, everybody, for being here. Ayala, would you, could you, could you put, your, um, put your email down uh, in the chat in case anybody wants to join us for... Um, for uh, for Shavuos. Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful teachings, Rabbi Shefa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, come and come visit me on my website and uh, other things that I'm offering too. So, a river trip? No, no, not a river trip. It's full. Oh, never mind. Oh, full. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I'm doing a mini retreat on the Song of Songs, uh, the Love at the Center curriculum on June 5th. Should be fun. I think Marlis has signed up for that. Good. And wow, wow, great to mm. see everybody. Stay in touch. Great to see you too. Have a good time in the psychedelics today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>